Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Mario Tamic here. I hope you guys are doing well, and I'm excited to be on the live with you guys uh, post-Thanksgiving. Hope everybody had a great time. Hope you guys were uh, kicking ass in the gym and uh, in all areas of your life, and happy to be here with you guys on this live. And um, yeah, let's uh, dive into this good stuff. Hey there. Hey, everybody. Um, I decided to actually jump on this one to answer a couple of questions from you guys, share with you guys what I've been up to, and um, I'm really, really excited to be here and um, hope this audio is coming through for you guys. Uh, Yachne, I'm doing really well, man. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for uh, jumping on here. I'm uh, doing fantastic. We've been really having a great time and uh, for you guys post Thanksgiving, the way in today doesn't count. Okay. <laughs> if anybody asks why, just say Mario said so. And the calories yesterday don't count as well. <laughs> it's like one of the first things my clients asked me this morning is like, oh my God, you know, we had this stuff and what do we do? Don't worry about it, guys. Um, today, just um, let's forget let's forget the calories because it's just a festive day and it's one day out of the year. Um, and actually, it doesn't matter really what you do on, on those days. Like your birthday, your e Easter, Christmas, and Thanksgiving, and maybe a couple of more days a year will make absolutely zero difference on how you eat and what you've done. And um, it really is about the other 350 days of the year that matter the most. <laughs> cool. Um so uh, I'm going to take a couple of questions, guys. I will let you guys jump into the questions in the chat. So please just jump in there, start asking them, and I'll cover as much as humanly possible in a short amount of time as possible. So really happy uh, to have all you guys here. And uh, pretty cool. So I see some questions already coming in. So I see um, a question about biohack, uh, what I use right now, uh, bulletproof coffee. I don't consider bulletproof coffee a bio coffee a biohack i consider bulletproof coffee to be a fad that has nothing to do with it with um with any of the goals that um, any of my clients or myself have and it's just the unnecessary amount of calories spent on coffee that's pretty much what bulletproof coffee is and the touted benefits are more or less bullshit so i would um I would advise spending your calories more wisely. And if you want to try the Mario coffee, then you take uh, some dark chocolate, 85%, and you put it in um, coffee and just let that chocolate melt in there. And uh, that's the Mario version of uh, the coffee. And I think my coffee is more bulletproof than the bulletproof coffee. And it actually is more tasty. I guarantee you that. And uh, so that's the biohack right there. <laughs> and if you need it for bulking, it's even better. You just add more chocolate and it works even better. And that's the biohack of the of the year for me. <laughs> Black Friday cheat weekend. Um, yeah, for some people, absolutely. For some people, is uh, is absolutely a, a whole cheat week, and then it turns into a cheat month, and then it turns into a cheat year. So just make sure that that's not you, and um, make sure you are not cheating uh, that much. So uh, uh, cool. Ha, awesome. So many, uh, where are you guys watching from? Um, do you guys, uh, drop that in the comments. I'm actually very curious where you guys are watching from. Just let me know in the chat, who am I getting today? It's about 5 PM here in Barcelona. It is actually getting pretty, um, late here as well. As far as the sun, it already set down. So it is interesting. Um, Israel, Netherlands. Awesome. We got split here. That's amazing. That's near my home. Actually. It's pretty cool. Uh, great to hear you have, uh, some, people from back home here. Um, cool. What would you uh, say here? Like, uh, let me see. I'm trying to just uh, catch up on some of these questions. We've got India, Colombia. Awesome. Uh, what is my opinion on the YouTube fitness world where a lot of YouTubers claim to be natural, even though they're not? Well, look, man, it really comes down to integrity. I think that most of the stuff out there, the longer I'm in business, the more I realize how little people give a fuck about integrity. And, um, I think that's where all these fitness YouTubers that are claiming to be natural fall short is, uh, you know, they, they underestimate people's intelligence and you can never do that. I mean, people are smart, like nobody's stupid. So if you're, you're, you're claiming to achieve certain results naturally and, um, like everybody knows you're just bullshitting those types of people will not last very long in the industry. And over the years, as I've been in the industry, I've just seen people come and go, especially people that are claiming to be natural. People eventually will, real, you know, people see through that shit very quickly. And of course, let me just move this, move my light a little bit to make sure that it's not, okay, now it looks much better. So yeah, like people see through that shit very quickly. And um, 
you know, people are just smart, you know, and you guys are pretty smart. Like you guys can tell very quickly, like who's bullshitting you, who's not. And it's very easy. Like most guys that, you know, we, we have a bunch of people, you know, always uh, send us emails, you know, like Mario, you know, what do you think about this guy? Or what do you think about that guy? The, the thing is like, I'm not the type of person to talk about other people. I just don't care. Like, I really, really don't care, but I do get pissed off from time to time seeing all kinds of bullshit and people shoving supplements down your throat and, you know, all this talk about, um, like some drugs that basically mimic steroids and just to get, there's no shortcuts in life. And there's just, there's just, I mean, lack of integrity is something that's very obvious to me when I'm looking at this stuff and people claiming, you know, walking around 210 pounds, uh, 10% body fat at five feet, 10 I mean, it's just bullshit. Like everybody knows it's bullshit and they know it's bullshit. So it's just a matter of people calling them out. I think for us as a community, um, like we need to start holding these people accountable so they're not going to be um, like able to bullshit and make so much profit out of it. And I think that's really where, where the responsibility falls. I don't think we can, we should expect them to have that moral compass, but we should actually set really high standards and penalize people that are just coming out there and, and selling all kinds of crap and claiming certain things like you should call them out. That's what I, I mean. That's as a, as a viewer and as a person, like you should just do like, what, what are you doing here? You know, and, and I think that's, that's fair. I mean, it should be a review process. Same as we have in science. Like you just can't come out with some research study and say that your supplements, like it, there was a study that came out on H and B and H and B was supposed to, you know, have these incredible results, like basically almost similar to steroids. And of course, you know, when people started to replicate the study, they didn't see any of the similar results that they did. And, you know, it's bullshit. And then very soon there was a paper that came out where all the uh, consensus of all the scientists agreed that, well, this research study was obviously framed or something was wrong here. So it, the results can't be replicated. So that, that's like an example of how science works. And that's basically how YouTube should work, but it doesn't in practice all the time. So just to um, give you some guys context, got it. We got New York here. We got some um, pretty cool questions here. Appreciate that, guys. Uh, love the questions. Just keep them coming. I'll try to cover as much as possible. Uh, by the way, do you guys um, do you guys hear this audio that is coming from this microphone here? Like, is it pretty cool for you guys? Just let me know in the chat as well, uh, because I'm not sure if this one is coming through in the camera or this one here. So it would be cool that if it's this one, because this one is much better. Um, uh, awesome. Sweet. Uh, let me just read a question or two here. Um, bear with me for a second. <laughs> um, love it, guys. Thank you. Uh, do you think sh teens should follow a cutting diet? No, no, I'm not going to get into too much in that. Uh, but no, I don't think you should do that. Do you take any pre-workout? No, man. I mean, uh, I don't think there's, I, I think pre-workouts are overhyped. And uh, I think they're, I mean, the people usually that are saying really good things about pre-workouts are people that are selling pre-workouts. People that are not taking pre-workouts are just very neutral or even like, why do you need that stuff? Because if you have coffee or tea or anything that has caffeine, you will uh, you will get almost nearly the same benefits if you just get enough of caffeine. And um, a lot of the other stuff like creatine, you can already get from just independently. So I don't I don't see the need to take pre workouts. I mean, there's a strong placebo if someone is um, is really uh, like you know kind of fake it until you make it or just through belief. Oh, the, it's the pre workouts. I hit a PR so. But yeah, like the, the data is just not there. So I would not recommend. I mean, most of my clients, I, I don't recommend them taking any pre-workouts. Um, I, I generally try to get people, when, when people are asking me about supplements, I try to help people realize that supplements are not like very, very insignificant. And they're usually a waste of time and they just don't do much. And I'm just very honest with people. I wish they did more. Like guys, like I would be the first person I would be like, holy shit, this is amazing. Everybody should take it. Like I would be the first person if that was true. Like the first person I would be just like yelling to like all my clients, everybody, you guys should take all of this stuff. But none of it fucking works. Like I mean, mostly, right? Like there's a few things that work, but a lot of this stuff in um, like BCAs, amino acids and like all, all this crap. I mean, it just doesn't do anything. <laughs> so, so, you, you know, you gotta be very like, people gotta be a bit more skeptical of the supplement industry. It's like a very, very, very um, profitable industry, but it's based on a lot of claims that are not uh, true. So it's important to keep that in mind, guys. So, I mean, I'm, I'm look, 
when I'm talking to you guys here, I'm telling you guys what I do and what I do with my clients. I coach hundreds of people. So we've gone with like over the years, we've coached hundreds of people and I'm not telling you guys anything that I'm not going to do. Right. So I'm telling you exactly what I personally do and what I do with my clients. So this stuff is, 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 is what's true. Right. And if there was some kind of supplement, I would absolutely tell you guys, I mean, the only supplement, I think really the only supplement most of my clients would take would be like whey protein or some form of protein if they need more protein. But that's like pretty much even creatine monohydrate, like sometimes, you know, but I mean, even I forget to take it for Christ's sake, <laughs> you know, even, even I forget it. I don't, I, I mean, I, I should be taking it, but I forget it actually myself. So I don't think it's really that important. <laughs> uh, cool. Uh, thank you guys for, um, for feedback on the audio. Happy that this is coming through for you guys. All right. Um, cool. Uh, let me see. <laughs> it's all kinds of questions here. What do you think of building muscle with kind of calisthenics and what's the best way to do so? I don't think calisthenics are the best way to build muscle, period, uh, because that's just not how most, like, it, it's just not practical for most people. Like, it can work really well, but I just I just don't think it's the, it's the most optimal way to build muscle. And there's numerous reasons for why I actually made a bunch of videos on it. Uh, the practicality of overloading and just being even able to do movements if you're a beginner it's not that much and um you know it it just it's a huge skill component so i mean i would i, I just don't think you should do calisthenics if unless you really love it um i would rather have something like um proper gym workout that that is very practical you know like i'm a very analytical and data driven guy and everything i do is measurable and systematized one thing I, with calisthenics, it's like you can't tell if you're actually making progress or if you're cheating on the form or if something is going on. Like it's not pretty, as predictable as I want it to be. Because my background, for you guys that don't, don't know this, my background is in computer science engineering. So everything I do is based on predictability, data, and knowing how to actually create systems that deliver predictable results. That's pretty much what I do. And everything in fitness my opinion is that it should be measurable and predictable. And one thing with calisthenics that I have based on my experience and everything I've tried, it's just not as measurable and as predictable and as straightforward as lifting weights. Now it can be a nice supplement to whatever you're else doing. I mean, it's, it's fun. And I also do it from time to time, you know, when I'm traveling and I mess around a little bit with it, but like to actually build an amazing physique, I find that weight training, like proper structured weight training and a great diet program and just having great habits overall, like the stuff there, I'm actually planning um, that that's like content for my, for my, um, my coaching program. I have that like board and I'm brainstorming ideas every day, how to improve the systems because it, it has to be a system at the end of the day. You know, a systems is like you have an input, you have an output and you have processes in the middle. So if the, every process should be measurable and predictable. So then, you know, if you put this in, this is what comes out. And that's basically how fitness should be. I think people glorify the, the art in fitness. And, uh, I'm a more of an opinion that it should be a, as scientific as possible to make sure that it, the results that you get are very measurable and predictable. I think that's, that's how, um, uh, that's how we evolve. I think that's the next level, because if you think about it, most of the stuff that is kind of like vague and woo woo and like, Oh, it's just like, you know, magically works out somehow. It's just not replicable. It's not repeatable. It's not going to deliver a repeatable result and you don't know what's going to happen. And I, I don't, I don't accept that. Right. Like I want to have predictability and I like that. I like predictability and split testing and a lot of algorithms and, and just, just the way how my brain works that I thrive in that shit. So uh, when someone says, you know, man, you know, I, I, I just feel this works for me. I just don't uh, like, I don't think that I don't weigh that much as much as it is. Okay. Here's the data. Here's what I've done. And here's why I made the progress. Right. So kind of like having that cause and effect. Um, it's really, really important because if anything is vague, I personally can't like, I, I can't, figure it out. Like I want to figure it out. I want to be able to reverse engineer it, the entire process and figure it out how it works. Um, awesome. <laughs> um, software developer, we got a Fabio is a software developer. I love that. Uh, that's amazing. Um, <laughs> go software developers. <laughs> um, 
what do you eat to stay in good shape? Do you eat a lot of seafood? Yeah, I actually do eat uh, quite a bit of seafood. Yeah, that's um, that's one of my favorite foods. Generally, like I'm a big fan of seafood. Um, cool. <laughs> Are be dumbbell bench flies dangerous for your back? I don't see how they would be dangerous for your back. <laughs> that, that just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, unless you're doing something awfully wrong or or you're thinking about a different movement, I don't see how that would be a bad thing for your back. I mean, any movement can be bad for your back if you're just if you don't study the form, if you don't know what you're doing in the gym. Of course, you can hurt yourself. Like you can hurt yourself in so many different ways, guys. <laughs> so you got to be smart, of course. Like I mean, take everything that I'm saying here is like use your brain, of course. Like you go in the gym and do your best and do your research and figure it out. I mean, uh, you just don't just randomly try to wing it. You know, of course, study and learn and adapt, right? Awesome. So guys, um, drop a couple of questions here. I think I'm having a little bit of lag. So I'm just going to scroll down to see if there's any other ones that um, that come out. And um, pretty cool. Um, awesome. What do I think about reverse pyramid training? It's like, like any other training. I mean, it can work. Doesn't, no magic in it. Um, I think people, people like they, they overstate the benefits of certain things because they, it's easier to sell something if you think it's magic. And then of course people start doing it. And then they, of course, placebo as well. And they get a bit better results and um, then it becomes magic. But there, there's nothing special about reverse pyramid training that you can not get through other forms of training, right? Like it's just marketing. So uh, yeah, don't want to burst your bubble, but it is like, it's just pure marketing. Um, so just, just so you know, right. I mean, that doesn't mean it doesn't work, but it's just, it means that it's a lot of marketing. So that's something that you need to know, right? Like it's reverse pyramid training for Christ's sakes. You're just reducing the weight and doing more reps. Like what the hell? I mean, what, what do you, <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's just that, you know, it's not like people say, you know, it's like when people say intermittent fasting, dude, it's like skipping breakfast. Like what, what else? I mean, <laughs> it's like that's not the reason why you know you get results you, you that's not you know like um yeah <laughs> cool um how come you've never proactively attempted to increase your instagram following like you did with one year of youtube you know even even youtube and both instagram like my biggest focus in the last i would say two years almost now has been my coaching and serving my clients and working with more people that are reaching out to me. And, and I've taken the route where the client comes first. And that's why YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, all the social medias are coming like a, at a lower priority. So everything I do is now in business. Everything I do is to serve clients. Clients always come first. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if I didn't publish a video for a month. Clients always come first. Clients need to get served. I don't care about anything else, right? And that's that's how this and how my company, one of my core principles is that. And I have a couple other core principles that I can share with you guys. Um, I actually have a list of them. If you go to my website and you go to the about section, there's a list of core principles that we follow as a company. And um, it's, it's something that you guys will probably find very interesting. But one of them is client success comes first. So how many follow? I don't give a fuck how many followers I have on Instagram. I want my clients to get the absolute best results. I want my company to be the best, most results-oriented personal development and fitness company on the planet. That's what I want. I don't give a fuck about how many followers I have, all right? That's not important at all. Zero, zero importance. Like, it's about value. Value always wins long term. If I have, I don't know, five hundred thousand subscribers or five hundred thousand followers on Instagram, and 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 I can't deliver good clients' results, that's all bullshit. So just so you guys know, right, that comes first. Doesn't matter the number of followers because anybody can get followers, they get people fucking results, right? Like that's the that's the thing. Like results at the end of the day matter the most. Like all the success stories that I publish. Every single one of them on my website, everywhere, real people, real results. None of this bullshit begging people to get your testimonial, scrapping the bottom of the barrel among like thousands of people that bought your program to get a testimonial. Fuck that. Like we have literally like nearly 100% success rate in the program because we give a fuck. And that's like, at the end of the day, that's what matters. You know, that's what makes us, and I believe like that my stuff is the best stuff in, on the planet 
is because of that factor, right? And um, and and it doesn't matter how many followers or anybody. I don't think anybody is like when they're like joining my program or anything, like, I don't think they're thinking, well, you know, Mario has only like a hundred thousand subscribers on YouTube, not 200. So I'm just going to not join the program. No, it's like people want results. They want to work with the best. They want to really, you know, they, they don't care about that number. Right. And I'm, I don't really care either. So, um, pretty cool. Awesome. So I see a lot of questions actually gathered up here. So let me, um, let me, uh, just check in a little bit here. So, um, is bear with me for a second guys um how many sets per week per muscle muscle group i mean it it depends i would say somewhere between the eighth and <laughs> i would say somewhere between like eight and 16 for most of the guys probably watching this live is going to be um is going to be right because most most guys watching this live i would assume you guys are beginners or intermediate lifters so somewhere between like i would say eight to 16 um you should be good um how much volume do you do? Oh, dude, like it can vary quite a bit. Like my volume varies. Like I do a lot of different uh, types depending on which time of the year you ask me. <laughs> um, so it can change a lot and it should change as well for you guys as well. Like you should, it should change, right? Um, how to make sure no digestive problems and no constipation? Well, I mean, something is not right in your diet like you're over you're probably consuming way 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 too many fucking uh bad foods or too much fiber or something that's happening with your gut not enough good healthy foods to feed the gut probably not enough fermented foods like who knows what could be happening there something is off maybe not drink enough water maybe you're too stressed out like all those things can happen and it's definitely a huge problem and i i mean i've never had any issues uh, none of my clients have, have any like gut issues or anything like that because we, we take a very holistic approach. You got to be very careful with the diet. I mean, that's the main thing you got to be really careful with. Um, cool. Um, Mario, do you ever burn out? Uh, probably I do. Like I probably do burn out, but I just don't care. Like that's, I mean, yeah, like there, there are days when there are days when I work from like, nine in the morning to like 11 p.m straight uh the only breaks i take is to go to the gym and get food so from 9 a.m to 11 p.m i mean yeah like you i mean my performance does decline that if i do that consecutively for five six days but of course i mean uh you gotta do what you gotta do you gotta get the job done like you know like does it matter if i burn out it doesn't again it's core principles like everything i do goes through core principles i have like a list of core principles and is Mario burnt out is not on the fucking list. The the first, as I said, like there's a couple of ones like integrity, client results, long-term value, long-term outcomes, not short-term. Short-term relief is great, but I want long-term success. And that's everything that I do goes through that. So you guys as well, like does Mario burn out? Hell yeah, Mario burns out, but fuck it. You know, like there's one life. I, I'll have plenty of time to rest when I'm dead and when I'm no longer here. So I don't, I mean, that's just my philosophy, guys. You don't have to do the way I do it. You know, like you don't have to like work as hard as I do or work as much. I, I think that's just not, not for some people. They just don't like to do that. Now, I, I like to do it because I find that if I put in the work and I see the results and I see that my stuff is impacting, I'll do whatever it takes. But the thing is, you have to have a really strong purpose because otherwise you will burn out and for nothing. I think a lot of people burn out doing meaningless work. And the worst thing is like, I would rather be burning out than doing something that I'm not really passionate about that doesn't contribute any value. So, I mean, that, that's that's the truth. I mean, you got to pay the price. I mean, everybody's burning out uh, who's successful. That's just the, that's just a part of the game, man. Like, there's just, you know, you, you burn out. You, like you burn out while you're burned out. I actually had this conversation with one of my clients that I'm helping with business as well. And um, he's like, oh, Mario, you know, I'm, I'm burning out, you know, man, like I'm doing like a couple of videos a week and, um, you know, I'm doing my coaching program. Dude, I burnt out like three times in a row, like burnout within a burnout within a burnout. It's like fucking inception when I was doing daily videos, like public speaking so daily videos every single day a video you guys know this you've been following me for a long time right so daily videos every single day public speaking meaning i was traveling at least once every month so 
to doing events and organizing events and doing a lot of that. I didn't hire that many people back then. So I was doing a lot of it by myself. I was doing all my own like the uh, hiring, managing, uh, clients, uh, all that stuff. And then coaching as well on top of that. And then like, dude, like I was so burnt out. <laughs> like my brain doesn't even, it couldn't even recognize the symptoms anymore. That's what happens. Like that's, you know, you have to hit those. And, and honestly, like people don't even know how far they can go until they really push themselves. And it's the same in the gym. Like most guys I see training in the gym, you know what they're doing? They're doing like a set that they could do like six, seven extra reps. Like I truly believe this. I truly believe this. When I go to the gym, when I see guys training, I can clearly see why just in the gym, and I, I call this the principle of micro effort in my coaching program, right? It's a principle of micro effort. Like the guy in the gym, you, you look at the guy and he's lifting and he can clearly do five more repetitions, five, six extra easy. And he just gives up because he gave up as soon as it became a little bit painful. That's why he's not seeing any results. Like one of the reasons why he's not seeing any results in his program, he's just not hustling hard enough. Like most people's work ethic doesn't match their ambitions. That's the truth, guys. Like, and even you guys, like you have like about 50, 60 of you guys on this, on this uh, live here. Only 10% of you are actually doing what I'm saying right now. Like only about 10% of you are probably pushing yourself to really, really, really see what the limit is. Most people are just not doing that. As soon as it starts to hurt, they back away. It's the same in business, same in fitness, same in, you know, see a hot girl and, you know, like they just, oh, like millions of excuses. Why not? Only like one out of 10 will do something. And that's the guy that's going to get all the results. You know, winners takes it all, right? So you got to condition your mind to really be that type of guy and, you know, not fall for these excuses. And all, all of you guys, this applies to every single one of you. It's that micro effort that then translates into everything else. How you do anything is how you do everything. Like it all comes down to that. If you half fast that set, you're going to half fast the whole workout. If you half fast the whole workout, you're going to half fast your work at that day and your hobbies and your project. You're going to half fast your relationship. You're going to half fast your, your relationship with your family. You're going to half fast everything in your life. I truly believe that. I truly believe like if you haven't built up the muscle, to push yourself, to challenge yourself, to break through your limits, you're going to always not, yeah, you're not going to be able to see your full potential. You're always going to be behind. And I don't know, if, does that make sense, guys? Like, did you guys know what I mean? Like, let me know in the chat if you guys know what I mean when I'm saying that. Like, people are just not pushing themselves. And I'm not saying this, like, you should go there, like, bro mode, YOLO, ego lifting, like, rack pulls and some crap like that. I'm really saying, like, any, like, normal lifting. Do, do you guys know what I mean when I'm saying, like, you know, five, six reps in a tank. Like you guys can probably see that. That's everybody in the gym. Like most people are just training and it's like fucking like ballet or something. Like ballet is more intense than, than that. Like what are you guys doing? You know, like where's the effort? Like where is that level of effort? Like, you know, training, like if you see, if you're, if you're in the gym, if I see you, if you look cute and all nice and ready for a selfie, you're not fucking training. Like, I don't know what you're doing. And it really comes down to that. Like at the end of the day, that's one of the key reasons why so many people, like they're just not getting results. Of course, there's intelligent training, coaching and programming and all of that, but I can give you the best program in the world. But if you're not putting in the effort, like what do you expect? You know, and, and that's the same thing with everything. I can teach you everything. I mean, everything you can know in nutrition, again, work ethic, you know, where's the work ethic to back that up? And where's the work? Like, where's, you know, understanding yourself, but why you're not putting in the work effort. That's what we focus a lot in my programs is like the psychology behind it, right? Like what makes people break through barriers? Like why if I, you know, why if 10 people hear the same advice, why only like some of them like really click with that and why some people can't push themselves. That's actually what a lot of what we do in, in my coaching is on the mindset and psychology behind it. Cause that's important. If you don't understand yourself, like you won't be able to push yourself and you got to really deeply understand yourself and your own flaws. And that's way how you can push yourself. Cool. And I'm not talking about taking sets to failure. That is not true. It's very, very far. Like that is not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about taking sets to failure. Most people never even come close to failure. I'm talking about five, six reps left in a tank. People don't even do, like, they don't know what failure is. Like, try to do an AMRAP on leg extensions. 
with your normal weight that you do for 15 reps. Like all of a sudden you do 30 reps. Like what the hell, you know, what the hell just happened there? You can do like double the reps because there's just pain. You just never went through that pain and training to failure is, is, is like, it's a whole different thing. Like you should not train to failure, like really go to failure and just like have the barbell pin you down and you die in the gym. You should not do that, but you should be able to actually push yourself to do the work that needs to be done. And that's a mindset issue because all this, like one rep left in a tank turns into six reps left in a tank very quickly because your brain is lazy. You're lazy. I'm lazy. Everybody's lazy. And if you just let it go, you're going to fall into that laziness, right? So be, be very, very careful of this, that this is a trap. Like every the guy that I know that I see in the gym coming and showing up every single day, I only know a handful of them that are actually training properly. So that's a big thing, guys. And of course, the, yeah, I've got to write program. You got to get have the right programming optimization over time and data collection and, and really know what you're doing. But at the end of the day, also, that needs to be the, the main component you're bringing to the table. Like when we interview people for joining my coaching program, Fitness Mastery, like we grill you on this. Like we really grill you on this. Are you ready to put in the work? Because we're not just doing some kind of, you know, like you're not just fucking around. I mean, let's get an amazing result. Let's get success stories. Like we just had a guy um, eight months into the program. He lost 60, um, 64 pounds. Mike from Canada, 64 pounds. Every single one of his lifts, not just doubled. But like he literally went like three times the the weights he was starting with three times he tri tripled his strength by the end of the program. It's ridiculous, and the guy just didn't give up. Like this didn't give up. He literally went from obese to to like super ripped and shredded, ten percent body fat. It's the mindset and the consistency, and and of course, I mean being very coachable and following the system, all of that stuff. But it's it's he brought the hard work to the table, and if you bring the hard work to the table magic things can happen but if he was looking for a magic pill or a quick solution or fucking herbalife whoever mentioned here dude like herbalife is not gonna like cut it do you understand like herbalife is not gonna make you successful like what the hell you know like i mean i gotta be real with you guys like i mean i think i think there's not enough re reality here you know like there's really not enough reality like there's just too much bullshit so i gotta be real with you guys look it's not the fucking Herbalives. It's not the Amways. It's not the protein shakes. It's not. Like, it really is not. Like, you can drink all, all the supplements in the world. If I'm seeing you in the gym, and if you don't know what the fuck you're doing, and you're checking your phone half the time, no results. Like, no results. Like, I mean, that's it. Like, I mean, you can take all the supplements. I see people, like, like spending, like, two, 300 bucks a month on supplements. Nothing. What do you expect? You know, like all the fat burners and line up all the fat burners or the, all the BCAs, all the aminos or the pre-workouts or the, all the uh, like vitamins and all this stuff. And it's like nothing. Like eat some broccoli for Christ's sakes. You know, like what the hell? You know, like eat some broccoli. You know, where's the diet? Like where's, where's the good stuff? That's important, guys. Like, I, I mean, I, again, I got to keep it. I, I really got to keep it real for you guys. You know, like there, it's just what, what, you know, people, it's like, sometimes, you know, you need to hear something that's not easy to hear, but it's, it's the fucking truth. Like I have these reality check, you know, people like tell me like, look, like my mentors and people that mentor me and like, dude, like you're not, you're not doing as much as you could. And I believe them because they can see, like, I'm too close to the problem. You know, when you're sometimes when you're training, when you're doing the your nutrition, when you're doing your own stuff, when you're doing your own business, you're too close to the problem. Like you can't be objective. You can't see what's wrong. That happens to everybody. Like an, a surgeon can't operate on himself. A surgeon can't operate on a family member. He's too close to the problem. He's not objective. He's subjective. And a lot of you guys here, I, I bet you a lot of you guys here can't even see your full potential. Like you can't even see what's possible because right now you're at the bottom of a very small mountain. And you're trying to reach this low mountain. But you don't realize like when you reach that mountain that there's a much bigger mountain afterwards. And when you reach that one, there's a much bigger one. And that's what people don't get. There's there's different levels to you that you're not you're not able to you know even see unless you're really you know getting perspective from outside from someone who's really been through all the mountains and then you're looking all the way up and you're like down there and you're like, oh, this is so tall. And he's like, 
dude, what the fuck? Like, that's like really, that's a short mountain. You know, that's like not that at all. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, like that, that's what I'm talking about guys. Okay, cool. All right. Let me, let me get into some questions before I turn into like a huge rant on this entire live. And I hijacked the whole live just to rant to you guys. Um, is trying to make sure that that, that uh, we we get some good value out here for you guys. Um, tired of being fat and ugly, hit the gym and just be ugly. <laughs> awesome, <laughs> I love that. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's uh, it's in the it's in the observer. You know, beauty is the, in the observer. Where do you live? Uh, right now, I'm in Barcelona, actually. Let me just check through some of this stuff. Mm. <laughs> Have you tried Herbalife? No. Uh, let me see. Have you built core principles when you were a kid or or a later age? Man, like before, um, before twenty two, I was just I didn't know what the hell I was doing in my life. Like before, I was even before twenty three, twenty four. Like I didn't know what the hell I was doing. It was just not, <laughs> I didn't have any core principles. I, were, I was gaming. I don't know if you've actually followed some of the stories that I put out about myself before I got into fitness. I mean, fitness changed my life. Like losing fat and really being able to transform my body changed my life because I became more confident. I putting myself in positions where I could get my first job. I was hustling. I was learning. I was putting myself, you know, I was putting myself forward for the first time in my life. I wasn't, I wasn't like, letting myself get the, the last position, everything. So before that, very, very, very shy guy. Very, like, I didn't have that many friends, very introverted. I was playing World of Warcraft professionally, for Christ's sake. I mean, how many professional World of Warcraft players do you know that are, like, super, you know, social, unless they're hanging out with other World of Warcraft players? I just didn't have a life. And because nobody around me was doing the same thing as I did, and... Um, before that, I was heavily gaming. Then I was drinking and I was partying. It's like not a really, really systematized. Life. I didn't know where I was going. I didn't have a goal. I didn't have an aim. And it's just most like most of you guys, I would assume. Like you don't really have a clear game plan unless you've really immersed yourself into developing yourself in, to be a person of value. And if you didn't set your goals and you don't have a strong vision, like how are you supposed to know? Like you're not born or usually like educated about this stuff. Especially, dude, when I was born, like, in, in Yugoslavia, for Christ's sakes, I mean, there's no, you know, it's communism. Like, people don't understand, like, it's communism. And, you know, just because one year they decided it's not communism when I was a kid doesn't mean that it's still not communism for, like, a, a couple of extra years. You know, it's like the mentality of the population doesn't change overnight. So it it brushes on you. Like, you definitely realize, you know, okay, shit, like, this is not the way successful people think. And then you have to almost like re-educate yourself on how how to become successful, how to reach your full potential, and in, install new core values. It's like it's like you have Windows XP and you need to install Windows 10, and you're running a Windows XP, right? So <laughs> to delete the hard drive, format it, and you need to install Windows 10 to actually run the show better. And you need to also upgrade your hardware to be able to handle Windows 10. Otherwise, your brain is gonna explode. If I can use my, uh, if I can, <laughs> if I can put it like that, um, cool. Did you stop gaming? Why did you stop gaming? Um, well, I just don't have the time for it, right? Like it's very time consuming. I still do play sometimes like, um, Mario Kart or something similar on like a Nintendo switch. Uh, if I'm at a friend's place or if they bust out a PlayStation, maybe some play around a little bit, maybe some Tekken or Dragon Ball Fighter Z or something like that. But actually gaming to a level you guys like let me let me ask you guys when you do something and you're like super deep down in the rabbit hole of for example world of warcraft it's almost like it's annoying to be an amateur i don't know if you guys ever felt like that you can tell me in the chat but it's like for me it's almost annoying to be an amateur and still kind of play and dabble with it because i, I just don't want to dabble with it if i'm doing it i'm going to do it properly like, I don't want to play it on easy and casual. I want to play it on, like, hard mode, and I want to crush it. And for that reason, I'm like, mm, may as well not do it because it's just not going to be as enjoyable. Because I enjoy the gaming if it's, like, really hard and if there there's a purpose behind it. But if there's no purpose behind it, I, I don't, you know, I don't, I, it's really hard to see it. You know, it's, like, it's it's difficult. Like, it's really, really difficult. So I'm like, 
not able to, you know, sometimes I'm just not able to overcome that barrier. But yeah, I, I think playing some stuff on the side is not a big deal if you can control it. Absolutely. If you have the time. Honestly, if the day was like 30 or 48 hours, I would still have plenty of stuff to do. So uh, sadly, I cannot spend more time on gaming. Um, that would be a uh, <laughs> that would be just a in my in my opinion right now wouldn't be the best spent time it wouldn't align with my core values which again coming back to that which is really important um cool um awesome guys so um some of you guys asked about my program here i don't i, I keep seeing that um <laughs> being a noob sucks <laughs> exactly yeah if you're a noob it does suck yeah so my program is called fitness mastery um so so that's okay. So let me give you guys some, some like ideas what we do with fitness mastery. So a lot of what I do in fitness mastery, it's almost like a, when you, when you're joining fitness mastery, you're becoming a part of my core mastermind of clients. And then we're optimizing your training and nutrition. As you go through the program, we're tweaking all the variables and we're basically split testing everything to dial in the program exactly to what you need. So pretty much everything is in the program is customized and um, it's a lot based on learning. So a lot of it is actually learning and unlearning and as well as doing a lot. So it's very challenging. It's a very hard program. Um, we don't have like short term programs or any kind of bullshit like that. Like minimum is four months commitment. And it's a program that really handles everything. It's called fitness mastery, which the goal of the program is basically to take anybody from like random person from the street, never heard of me. Nobody ever knew anything full-on mastery like after you complete the program you just know everything you need to know and you also get kick-ass results and it's all about results like i don't you know like all the woo woo feel good stuff god bless everybody who's who loves that stuff and all that stuff but I, i'm all about results like data results clearly measurable predictable repeatable I don't care about anything else. That's my first objective. And of course, like we work a lot on mindset and, and psychology and really helping understand like how your brain works and why you self-sabotage yourself, why you get in your own way. So a lot of it is based on that as well. So we touch a lot on, so it's really four elements, right? Training. Uh, so everything, train, basically everything you know about training, how to customize your own workouts and all that stuff. Nutrition, pretty much everything you know about nutrition, like really science-based and dense stuff. And then high performance habits, that's pretty much what I call like how to perform at your best every single day, how to have like basically energy from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed, like nonstop, like be a super high performer, a player, which is what I want all of you guys to be. And then the fourth component is psychology and mindset, which we really dive into like why you have these barriers that you put and they're not allowing you to succeed. You're self-sabotaging, you're binging or you're... You're just not letting yourself to succeed sometimes, you know, like you, you settle for good instead of pushing yourself and getting into greatness, like all these little things. And, and we really broken that down. And over the years, I've, I split tested and worked with hundreds of guys. So I know exactly where like I can, I, I design algorithms basically that, that push you in the right direction and you learn how the system works. At the end of the day, it's a system, right? So what I share, these four things are components of a bigger system. So there's a fitness mastery system. It has four components, which is exercise, nutrition, high performance habits, and mindset. That broke those broke into subsystems. And you guys are engineers. You guys will, get, you guys will get this. But my point at the end of the day is like, you come in like, and there's a bunch of these processes. You come out like different person, new identity, new life, new body, new everything. That's really what it's about. So, I mean, that's important for you guys to know. It's like something that I've worked on for like four years already five years actually it's 2019 soon so it's been refined over years and it's it's my baby yeah you get to work with me personally like every single week you have a huge like you have an amazing amazing amount of support like huge amount of support from the mastermind from my team it's like a family as well like that that's the that's the other part right like a lot of people like think it's all about the you know like the optimization and the programs all that Real results come from mentorship and coaching and support. That's like where real results come from. The analogy I love to use for this is like, let's say you want to climb Mount Everest, right? And let's say at the bottom of the mountain, me and you are there. And I'm just like, okay, well, you know, Johnny, here's the map. Here's all the tools. Here's the jacket. And just go on your way and go climb up the mountain. The chances of you achieving that, like, hitting that top of the mountain is really low by yourself and no matter how good the map is. But 
if I take you by the hand, if I drag you up the mountain, if I take you and I go with you, and if I've gone through the process like hundreds of times, there's a pretty high chance we're going to get there. Now, if you also have a mastermind of people as well that are traveling with you, I mean, that's just fucking epic. Because then if you slip, there's like multiple people helping you. And uh, even with that, like even with that is a fuck ton of work. It's really, really hard. And it's still low oxygen. It's still freaking cold on the mountain, no matter how good your jacket is or whatever the hell you bring. So yeah, man, it's, it's really like, well, you guys asked about the support and the program and everything. It's super dense. And, and it's like, we're not the cheapest, but we're absolutely the best in the world. Like I pretty much believe that hundred percent. We're not the cheapest. Absolutely. Never try to be that, but we try to like be the best, like, oh, like always be the best and deliver the best support, the most the most like giving a fuck factor like that's <laughs> that's what makes fitness mastery work so well it's like the give give a fuck factor which i think people don't understand in, in business like they're they're all, always working around like how they can charge like how they can like like get customers to like um you know all, all kind of schemes you know to get like do you actually give a fuck about people you know and that's at the end of the day that's what matters the most and that's what will make any program like if it's a good program that's what really makes it epic and that's my goal so hope that helps like for you guys that asked about the questions this is um this is really what this is really what makes um uh, this is really what makes the the whole thing work um cool Awesome. So I see a bunch of questions actually appearing right now. So bear with me, guys. We actually have like 15 minutes left. So I will try to get through. And by the way, like super thankful for all of you guys here. Um, I think you guys are fucking rock stars. And I love all of you guys for joining this live. I know I haven't done a live in a while. So I'm really grateful and blessed to have all of you guys here and ask these great questions and to be able to share this time with you guys. And uh, I know holidays are yesterday and today as well. So um, I'm glad you guys are spending some time here with me and getting exposed to some of these great questions and stuff like that instead of, uh, you know, stuff like you know being in the line of uh, Black, Black Friday and fighting to get a fucking DVD player or something stupid like that, right? Um, <laughs> being a consumer more or less, right? Um, awesome. Um, cool. Um, healthy steroids. Dude. I don't give a fuck about steroids, okay? Like, I think taking steroids, like, you, you just really have to have something messed up in your value system to be able to, it, it, like, at least if you're not, look, the only person I would say that justifies taking steroids and, like, taking, like, years off of your life and getting super sick, if you're, like, a super pro bodybuilder and that's your passion and you're willing to die for it, go for it. If you're not a pro bodybuilder, like, if you're literally not the next Ronnie Coleman, Taking steroids is just fucking stupid. Like, that's just retarded. Like, that's just my opinion, by the way. Like, I don't, like, go for it. You know, like, if you want to kill yourself, absolutely go for it. No, like, like, you know, evolution will do its thing. But, like, if you're not the next pro bodybuilder, you're a fucking moron for, for taking steroids. Or even, even like, research, like, just getting into that stuff. Like, it's so far outside of my reality when people ask me about that. Like, I don't even consider that a variable. Like, it's like... None of the people I work with give a fuck about that. Not nobody like I've ever came in touch with, like in general, does anything. Like my clients is like absolutely forbidden, even. So, like I don't, I don't, I'm just not in that reality. Like I'm just outside of that reality. Like if you can't do it in, like the the proper way, the the point is lo like long life. That is, you're very active and healthy. Longevity is king. Working on it naturally, like. You know, treat your body right, eat right, everything is right, and that's how it should be. So that's my opinion. Again, plenty of other guys might probably have other opinions about drugs or whatever. Totally cool. Like, I respect everybody. Do your thing. It's not in my world. It's just not going to happen, right? I'm very, very against, the, um, like, any of that bullshit. Now, if people, again, are competitors, and that's their, they're willing to shave off years of their life and – like, you know, it's their trade-off. Like, it's their sacrifice. They're willing to die for it. You know, I respect that. Go for it, you know? Um, that's totally cool, right? 
Is there a habit book that you would recommend? Just started Atomic Habits. Yeah, Atomic Habits by James Clear is actually pretty good. Um, I've read half of it. Um, actually, I just got it. So I read half of it. It's really good. I mean, I've known his stuff for a while now, so it's it's decent. You know, it's, um, it's I mean, very, very friendly, you know, to read. It's not very complicated. It's not very dense um, that you can't understand what he means. So it's very practical. Yeah, it's a pretty cool book. Like, it does inspire you, you know, to take more action and, and be better. So I would I would endorse James Clears' book. Uh, I think it's a pretty cool one. So um, I think that you guys will love that stuff. I mean, of course, it's a very dense personal development stuff that I also read a lot about. Um, cool. So guys, I'm gonna take. Um, I think we have time maybe for um, for like a couple more questions. I think because it's sort of like 51 minutes in, so I'll just um, I'll just go through a few of them just to make sure that um, we can still cover some stuff. So again, appreciate all of you guys for all the great questions. Uh, really cool stuff here. So uh, let me check. Um, hmm. Uh, let me see here. What should I do if I feel like I'm plateauing? Well, that's a whole different ball game. Like what is the plateau? Is it weight training? Very, very difficult to diagnose that just through like limited information that you just gave. Uh, can we get ripped with a vegan diet? Absolutely. Like I work with a lot of vegan clients. There's just no reason why you shouldn't be able to get ripped. Uh, do you do day game like Max? <laughs> Shout out to my buddy RSD Max. I don't do day game. Uh, that is not currently in in my plan. <laughs> For dating related stuff, by the way, you guys got to check out his stuff. RSD Max on YouTube. We've done a bunch of videos together, so you guys got to check that out. Super cool guy. Uh, give him a shout out for me on any of his videos in the comments or on his Instagram. Awesome dude, like deep into personal development, same as I am. We share a lot of like core values when it comes to uh, work ethic, when it comes to like all, all these stuff that I talked to you guys about. Absolutely. Um, you got to follow his stuff. So uh, pretty cool. Um, yeah, there's there's a couple other ones. Are you an investor or just a coach? I don't do investing. So I don't do stuff that I'm not really uh, an expert in. So investing, I don't, I'm not an expert in investing. I invest in my own business again, in my employees and myself. And, and that's what I consider myself to invest in. Uh, like stocks, stuff like that, I don't really do because I'm not an expert in it, right? That's I mean, the best way to lose money on something like that and just you know, go let the ego play is just try to pretend that you know something that you don't. So uh, so I try, to, I try to stay in my lane of the expertise and slowly expand my expertise. So if I wanted to become an investor, which I have a bunch of good friends that are doing that, um, they're already starting actually to recommend some stuff. So um, I might get into that. I think it's pretty cool. I mean, expanding your financial knowledge is very, very important. I don't think the education system does enough for that. I think people are just um, like, we're not taught to handle um, these types of things. And it's a huge opportunity if you know that kind of stuff. I mean, it's amazing. Um, so it's pretty cool. Have you tried the keto? Have you tried the keto diet um, for a prolonged time? I've I've done the keto diet of up to three months. That's my longest. I think I've done like twelve week. Yeah, twelve actually sixteen weeks of keto. Um, I don't think it's sustainable for me. Like I just don't see the reason why to do keto because it just conflicts so much with my life. Um, and it's just a massive pain in the ass. I just don't see why, I mean, why I would have to do that sacrifice because there's absolutely zero benefits for me, like nothing. I, I just don't see any benefit compared to my existing approach where I'm just getting like all the healthiest foods that are known to the main kind in my diet. And I don't, and I don't have to worry about whether my meal when I eat out, um, you know, with friends or something like that has carbs in it, you know, what the hell? It's just not worth it. Like, why why put extra stress on yourself? It's just not worth it. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a it can be effective, but it's just I don't really see that the trade-off is just not worth it at all. Yeah, everything I do, guys, it's like, can I do this thing long term? Is this really sustainable? And keto for me, I don't think it is. Like I've tried multiple times uh, to experiment with different forms of keto as well. So cyclic, full keto different types like traditional, just full on keto. 
uh, just doesn't fit my lifestyle. It doesn't fit who I am and what I do and how I see myself. And it just, yeah, it doesn't work. Nope. <laughs> um, awesome. <laughs> do I promote long-term fasting? Well, if I did promote long-term fasting, you wouldn't be asking that question. So I think that answers itself. <laughs> Cool. There's a bunch of questions here. Um, if I'm training my chest, doing the same exercises, but gradually increasing in weights, reps, should I still change them often with other exercises? I mean, if you're getting great progress, like if you're actually progressing, I mean, you got to do what you do. You know, like if you if you have stumbled upon something that works, you got to keep doing that. I mean, it would be silly to change something that works. But now, if you if objectively measuring didn't know you can't see the progress there's no progress well then you need to make some changes right um like that's that's the thing right like when when you do something if if it clearly works and if you can do it right like when i say it works i don't mean like just works with a massive amount of willpower but i mean like if it really works and if it's sustainable for you and if it's like working that's great um you know and you should do it do that but if you then stumble upon walls and you can't get yourself to keep doing it and if it just doesn't fit your lifestyle it's like me with keto right like i can i can clearly willpower and discipline myself in doing it absolutely and of course it will work i mean at the end of the day you know you can get shredded in so many different ways but like it doesn't fit my lifestyle. It does, it's not sustainable for me. I can make it work if I sacrifice a lot for it, but it's not worth it. Like you can make anything work. Like you can make the fucking kiwi that work. You know, just eat kiwis and don't do anything. You know, like you can you can make you can make anything work, but it's is it like sustainable and also are the results the best results that you could be getting, right? Is it optimal and is it sustainable? Those are the two big, big factors to ask yourself, right? Uh, cool. So I'm going to take two more questions, guys, and I'm going to bounce. Um, it's getting close to 6 p.m. here. I have another appointment, so I got to jump off. And uh, so, uh, so I got to jump off as soon. So I'm going to take a couple more questions, guys. Bear with me for a second here just to read out, uh, see what are going on. Which are better drop sets or incremental says There is no better. So that's just a matter of how you plan it into your program. And, and it, at the end of the day, it's, it's even the wrong question to ask, right? It's not... It's not a good question to even ask because they're just two totally different things. It's like asking me, "Is are apples or oranges better? I mean, that's basically equivalent. Um, can being fit and big get girls without game? <laughs> okay, so can you get girls if you're just... Um, can you if you're just lean and fit? So look, it, it's with anything. Like so, there's a distribution of people that there's a certain percentage of people that will literally just like you for the fact that you have abs and you look good, and that's all they want, and that's very attractive for them. There's like a percent, like a small percent that really likes that. Now there's another percent that likes when people don't have that. You know, when you say, "Oh, you're too big and you're too shredded." So there's a percent of, of girls or guys, depending on what you're into, that will like whatever you are. And I don't think that's the component that that it's working on your social skills. It's the point you need to work on if you want to actually get into great relationships instead of just, you know, the body will help with the with passive confidence and you achieving your goals and being on your purpose on your like being a man on your purpose. I mean, that's what you should be. If you're a guy in your 20s and your 30s and your 40s, like you should be in fucking good shape. Even in your 50s and your 60s, you should be in good shape. Like if you're not letting yourself down and if you're achieving your goals, I think that speaks volumes to the person that you're also looking to attract because you want to attract someone, I hope so at least, you want to attract someone with the same core values, someone who understands what you're going through, someone who is of high value as well. If you want to attract someone high value, you got to be high value. Like you, you can't just... Fake it till you make it. You gotta be high value if you want a high value person in your life. So I don't think the you know it's like directly what's getting you the girls, but indirectly you becoming a high value person, taking care of yourself and leveling up your life is what's gonna allow you to put yourself in a position where more high quality people will gravitate to you, and you're gonna actually have a better circle of friends, people. You're gonna be more confident, outgoing. You're gonna basically bring more value to the table for other people. And guess what? By the rule of reciprocity, they're also going to bring more value to your table, and you're going to have great relationships as a as an effect of that. So, 
I think that's really what people miss with getting uh, their fitness handled. It that it can change your life from all those other factors. Before I got in good shape, I was again introverted, shy. I would never raise my voice. I, I was the guy in the back of the room that was always like, mm, "I have something to contribute that would really help people," but I don't want to raise my voice. You know, I don't want to step up. I don't want to say something without like, you know, I'm going to embarrass myself. I'm going to look like an idiot. You know, who am I to tell people what do I think and that kind of stuff. And before I got in good shape, that was me. Like I literally spent like, that was like 22 years of my life, more or less, all of that. So getting in good shape, um, like number one, it kind of gives a really good first impression so you can actually express yourself and more confidently present yourself which then helps other people as well. They're going to really have, you know, they can see like, okay, I'm in the presence of a high value person, which does help as well, of course, with everything. So it did, it did change my life and it will change your life as well. Like I guarantee you that getting in great shape and really being on point with your fitness, your nutrition, your, your high performance habits, it will change your life guaranteed hundred percent, hundred percent. Like that's just incredible. The ripple effect of of this thing and um it's so sad that most people don't know about it right like most people are just like yeah they, they don't really get it right but you guys get it i think a lot of you guys get it so um pretty cool um awesome guys so love your questions here um really really love your questions i i'm already getting pinged for the meeting so um i gotta bounce for you guys that are interested in some high level coaching. So for you guys that are interested in fitness mastery. Okay. So this is for you guys. So here's who this is for. Okay. So before I tell you how to get in touch, here's who this is for, right? We work with entrepreneurs and busy professionals. Okay. That's the, the first thing. Second thing we work with guys and usually ranging somewhere above 21. So we don't really work with high school and for, for a number of reasons, right? So we work with guys, usually 21. Most of our guys are actually between 25 and 35, busy professionals, entrepreneurs. They really want to get this thing handled on a super high level, right? It takes hard work, not a walk in the park, really freaking hard work, okay? If you're up for a challenge, if you're an action taker, then this is a good thing. If you're a dabbler, if you're not looking to invest in yourself as well, like if you're someone who's just looking for free tips and some random shit and you're not looking for real help, we're not a good fit. Like we're not the cheapest. We're not about all that crap. If you want to get it handled and you get want to get good mentorship long-term, be a part of this awesome, amazing program, then you get some really cool stuff. And then you can go to atomic.com slash call. So that's the link I'm going to, I'm gonna put um, I'm gonna put a link here in the chat. Why not high schoolers? Because uh, one part for for um, for reasons of legal reasons because you can't sign a contract and and other things as well. Like you, it's just you can't you can't do business with minors. Like it's just not how it works. Like the coaching work that that doesn't like fit. And also like the the investment level that we require it's not affordable for a lot of people in high school. So we're actually rolling out different programs now that I'm working on that will have, that will be more affordable and available for people that are like just starting out because they don't have a job. I mean, most people don't have a job when they're in their high school. Like I was totally broke when I was in my high school. I was like, Jesus Christ, like I could barely scrape like $5, right? So I'm working on programs that would be more like like that, that you, that you could afford and you can get some great support there. But of course, like for high level mentoring and for this, like, I mean, again, we work with entrepreneurs and busy professionals. Like most of the guys that I work with you guys work for Amazon, Google, Intel, like super, super high quality companies that they, you know, people are just, you know, that that's kind of who we work with. And that's our mastermind, right? We have other programs as well, by the way. So there's a mix of things. So I'm just sharing with you guys here, what we have. So, um, so check this out. Also, another thing, by the way, like if you have any kind of injury or something like that, it, it's probably not the best idea to, to reach out and start on planning this right now. You just go through rehab and, and get that fixed first, because if you have a really, really painful injury right now, we can't really work with you because it wouldn't be fair to you because we will push the hell out of you. So <laughs> you know, got to be ready for that. So uh, let me just drop the link real quick here before I bounce um, for you guys that are interested in this. Uh, you can go to this page, um, comic.com slash call. And on that page, you can, um, 
you can book a call with the team, uh, with me or the team, whoever, you know, I don't know who's going to be free. And then uh, from there, we, we can take it. We can see if you're a good fit for the program and we can see how we can make some epic stuff happen. As I said, again, look, strict criteria, right? Like very strict criteria who we can work with. There's a very limited amount of people that I can take on. I still work with every single person individually. Like it's not a, like a random thing. Like it's not outsourced or anything like that. It's, it's very, very personalized. So limited amount of people, limited amount of spaces. So I know apply, we'll see if you qualify, we'll see if you're fit or if we're fit as well. Like sometimes this doesn't work out. Um, other than that, I will, um, I'll catch you guys soon. All right. Have a good one. Everybody have a great weekend. It's Friday. Hope you guys are going to kick ass tonight. Um, let's go out, socialize, have some fun. And I will see you guys soon. Uh, with the next video, hopefully next week that I'm going to put out something, else, something really cool that I want to share with you guys as well. And, um, have a good one, everybody. Love you guys. I appreciate you guys this time and listening to me rambling and ranting here for, for like an hour. <laughs> um, as I said, love you guys and I will catch you guys soon. All right. Have a good one, everybody. Bye from Barcelona.